Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar on VectorMap Local. My name is Rachel Evans, I'm the Product Manager for VML. Um, in this webinar, we're going to have a quick look at the new enhancements that you should all have received in the October update of your VectorMap Local products. Look at some of the formats um, and the new styling options that you've got as well. Um, so, okay, so to get us started, um, a quick look at the background of the project and why we've done this. Um, the main driver for starting to change VML um, was to increase the currency and the consistency that you as users see in the product. Um, to do this, we've created an automated process to make VML on a quarterly basis. So this creates VML from our large scale database, um, which feeds most of our large scale products, um, including things like master map topography layer, um, and is the database that all of the changes our field surveyors and our remote sensors are feeding into. So all our change intelligence goes into there, which allows us to then use that to keep VML as up to date as possible. This changing that required us to make a new system. So we've also had the opportunity at the same time to change other things that we've received customer feedback on or that we've wanted to improve. So you'll see some changes to the schema, there's some new attribution, there's new feature codes, and we've also been able to respond to customer feedback around formats um, to add the additional availability for geo package on the vector data as well. So I'll go into a bit more detail on, on the changes within these enhancements. So this time around, um, just for October 2018, you will all have received a full supply of data. Um, this is because the old and new data aren't compatible with each other. So we've had to baseline you all. Um, anyone trying to use the old and new versions together would have seen some very odd combinations. So everyone needs a new supply of the new enhanced VML to start with. Um, and then after this, you'll revert back to whatever your other contract was. So if you are a, a usual COU customer from January, you'll get that COU again. The full supply was just for October 2018. Um, obviously, if you were a full supply customer, we'll keep giving you full supply. We'll, we'll just roll with whatever your contract uh, was previously. Um, so the new schema is now online and we've got our new style sheets up to match. They're on our GitHub account, um, or you can access them via the support section of our VML web pages, which just gives you a link out to, to GitHub to download them. Um, the changes we've made to the schema um, involve removing some of the feature codes that weren't being used within the product and adding some new ones that we've now got in our data that can be used. Um, the ones we've taken out, you shouldn't notice any different. They, they were ones that were obsolete within the product and weren't actually being used. Um, but the ones you should notice coming in, um, for example, we've got aqueducts, railway bridges, footbridges, uh, and guided busways. Um, there's a number of others, but they're all detailed within the technical specifications and listed in the release notes for October 2018. Um, so if you haven't already, it's worth just going and have a quick look at those. Um, just familiarise yourself with exactly what will have changed um, and what you'll be seeing different in this data. We've now put in uh, maintained feature level identifiers, which allow you to do things like track change over time. Um, we've got the options for vector data and geo package, um, non-tile bound features and data changes, which I'm going to go into some more detail on in the next couple of slides. So um, as I mentioned earlier, the main enhancement we've been aiming for with this update is to currency and consistency. Um, the fact that data is now automatically produced means that all the features are represented in a consistent way. Uh, individual feature types are, are all handled the same. Um, and these will now be updated as soon as the data is present in our large scale databases. We're, we're conscious that this wasn't necessarily happening quick enough in all cases in the previous data. Um, so we're really hoping you will see a marked in, increase in currency um, in, from, from this data onwards, really. Um, you'll see examples like the ones we've got on the pictures where you've got whole housing estates um, appearing or industrial parks also have seemed to appear. Um, but the data, as you've seen it in October, is as it sits in our large scale databases. Um, this is obviously something that will continue going forward. You're likely to see a much larger volume of change because of this, because we're touching the whole country at once. So um, any COU customers among you should be aware that you might see larger data volumes going forward. Um, as we can just reach much more of the, the country in each quarterly release with this approach. Um, so the next process, the next enhancement I want to touch on is to how we generalise buildings. Um, while we were do, um, doing the automation process, we were able to make some decisions about how to generalise the data. For the most part, these are 
the same or very similar to what you'd see in the old data. We still wanted to keep it vector map local. It is still the same product. Um, but we've looked at whether we can tweak some parameters to give more value to you as the customer. Um, one of the examples that will be particularly visible is buildings. So we've changed them to give you slightly more detail within VML. Um, it looks maybe slightly less generalized. You get more of the juts and recesses, more of the building detail. Um, and you also get smaller buildings will now come into the data. So as an example, I've just highlighted here, um, the old data on the left, you can see the rock terraces was completely generalized. Um, whereas in the new data on the right, you can see where those individual houses are, the juts and recesses um, coming back into the garden. Um, just gives you that extra level of information um, and extra value to those of you working with buildings. So the next improvements that we'll touch on is the connected road network. Um, this pr previously it wasn't a connected road network, you obviously just had the roads in there. Um, this gives you increased attribution, which both works well for styling um, and is reflected in the new style files that we've created. Um, but the, the draw level, which is a new attribute within the product, um, allows the road to know whether it goes above or below other roads that it intersects with um, and therefore allows that connected road um, network across GB. Um, it's not a sort of routing product or anything, it's not got road routing information, it doesn't know if it's a dead end or a one way street, etc. Um, so there's some caveats on what you can use this for, but in terms of simple routing applications um, and knowing where those roads connect, um, that attribution is now within the product um, and obviously means that styling looks uh, a, a little bit neater on some of those complex road junctions. Um, so do go and have a look um, at how that is now represented in the styling. Um, there are also changes to the raster version of the product in terms of how features are shown. Um, we've got some major examples here around road and rail features mostly, um, which are just depicted in, in clearer ways really with some different styling, um, such as motorway road junctions, uh, secondary access road and, and some of the tunnels as well. You'll, you'll notice on the rasters that those look different. Um, we've also tried to make better use of descriptive text abbreviations to just improve how the rasters look um, and their usability. So um, working in response to customer feedback, we've changed the tile structure in the new Vexmap local. Um, so features no longer end at a tile edge. Um, they're non-tile bound features or they're hairy tiles, depending on um, which terminology you've heard in the past. Um, Essentially, this maintains topological relationships of features and means you get the whole of the feature, even if it goes outside the tile. Um, this reduces the need to merge features back together if you're taking two adjacent tiles. So hopefully remove some of the, the processing workload that I know a lot of customers were seeing. Um, there are some features this doesn't work for, things like tide lines and contours, which can obviously cover masses and masses of tiles. We have had to, to rein them in a bit, uh, but all other features, you'll now see them coming over the edge of the tiles as in the bottom picture on the slide. So to move on to the format changes that we've been able to put in place, um, as mentioned earlier, we've managed to add geo package to the format catalog. So you can now go on and order Vectormap Local in geo package if you're taking the vector data. Um, if you're still taking GML, we've updated that to 3.2.1, which is um, obviously a lot easier to use in a lot of the new, uh, a lot of software packages um, brings us up a bit more up to date um, on the version of GML there. Um, there's no changes to the raster formats so you can continue using those as you were before. So as it's the new one I uh, just wanted to spend a little bit of time on geo package um, and on, on why we've chosen that. So it's an OGC standard format, it's open, it's platform independent, there's a lot more information available online. So if you want to go into the sort of the technicalities and stuff behind GEO Package, um, we'll recommend that website that's on the slide, um, geopackage.org. Um, but ultimately the reason we've chosen to reduce to release VML in this is because of the feedback from customers on how easy it is to use. Um, this appears to be the preferred one. So if you've not heard of it, go and try it out. Um, if you have, hopefully you'll agree with us that this is the one to go for. Um, so there's a long list of software that supports Geo Package. Um, it's the full list on the OGC website. I've just pulled out a few that I think a lot of our customers use. Um, so if yours isn't on there, don't panic. Go check out the website. But we know that Pitney Bowes, Esri, Cackle, and QGIS all support it. So in terms of how to use it, 
Um, as I mentioned, easy to use, drag and drop format. It loads directly into software packages, um, which removes the needs for translators and things like that. Um, you can apply styling in the same way you would have to any other file. Um, and then just sort of easy to use in whatever GIS software you've chosen. So for Vectormap Local, GeoPackage is available download only and will be full supply every release. 